Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. We're live here from Temple Bar in Dublin. How did we get here? <laughs> Not by sleigh this time, but... <laughs> <laughs> and a very happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. And from Archie and myself and all the team at the Piano Academy of Ireland, in this, our 15th year, welcome to this year's 11th National Piano Festival and our first Limerick Writing Contest. It's been a huge event of fun putting all of this together and you are in for a feast of wonderful piano music, wonderful piano performances and our brilliant and clever Limerick finalists who hail from all over the world. The talent has been phenomenal and it has been a huge amount of fun. <laughs> it sure has. Limerick is just perfect for the pub so I'd say we should just head in and grab a pint. What do you say? Yes, let's do that. All right, let's go. <laughs> Great, so, cheers. <laughs> cheers. And thanks to all of the pianists and their amazing teachers out there for working so hard on all that piano practice, mm -hmm. especially during these times while Ireland is still under level five restrictions. Mm -hmm. Remember, most of the lessons that these young people have been receiving has been happening via Zoom, which is mm -hmm. just incredible. To be able to reach that standard of performance you will hear today. Mm -hmm. How's your Zoom going? Oh, it's actually it's going really great. Um, amazing what you still can hear, um, even with some sound distortion from time to time. We're having lots of fun. The kids are learning loads, and that's amazing. <laughs> great. And then you all have gone and put together all your very best videos to share with us. We fully understand that that takes a lot of work. And during these times, just the sheer logistics of getting the recording together and that you're happy with it. I mean, even with the help of your teacher who is probably in another location, it's not an easy task. Absolutely. And as parents ourselves, we fully understand the importance of goal setting, of getting ourselves and our kids out there to perform. And of course, getting that evaluation from an esteemed adjudicator. It's through putting ourselves in a slightly uncomfortable situation that we grow. Gosh, there's just so much to learn from doing these things. And we thank you for putting your trust in us. And we hope it's going to be a great experience for you all. I think it will. Hang on. They've already done all the work. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so unlike the nerves that you might have right before playing live, mm -hmm. I suppose everyone can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Exactly. <laughs> At this point, I would like to introduce this year's piano adjudicator, Dr. Peter Mack who grew up in Terenure, right next to the Piano Academy. Um, both he and I had the same teacher for a good part of our earlier lives, the great Mr. Frank Heenahan. And in the 90s, Peter came out to Seattle, Washington to further his studies where he settled and then remained since. And now just recently, Dr. Mack has assumed a new role as president-elect of the MTNA, that's the Music Teachers National Association in the US, an incredible honor indeed such a highly successful teacher, we are truly honoured to have him adjudicate for us this year. Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Mack and I'm making this video to send greetings and to say how much I'm looking forward to hearing you play for me as I'm the adjudicator of the Piano Academy of Ireland's 11th National Piano Festival this year, 2021. I can't wait to hear what you're going to do. Oh, and by the way, a huge hand to all those who went to so much effort in dressing so beautifully and so festively for this St. Patrick's Day. Yes, Archie's looking <laughs> dapper. <laughs> we'll be announcing some of the most festively dressed a little later, so keep your ears peeled for that. And now, what about the limericks itself? Oh, yes. It's a strange year, so we thought about combining <laughs> the limerick writing contests and in just a few weeks we gathered over 70 limericks from all over the world the US, UK, Philippines, Qatar just to name a few and of course the majority were from Ireland all four corners incredible talent that's out there you know including some very seasoned writers some newbies and some great children mm -hmm. writers too so yes. I'm really impressed um, do you have a limerick yourself? Oh, um, I don't. <laughs> well, I did help Solomon write one about his sister. Um, it's a bit too complimentary, so he <laughs> preferred not to say it. He prefers to thrash her, in fact. Um, 
Did you want me to? Yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Here goes. Me sister is quite the achiever. Straight A's, and some might say a D. She can sure play the keys and is quite the bee's knees, as she's named after the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Awesome. Yeah. So, in between piano performances, you're going to hear about 25 or so of this year's Limerick finalists from all over the world. And we will also get to meet our Limerick adjudicator, Dr. Matthew Potter. Um, and he's going to announce the winners, so that's going to be really exciting to hear at the end. Mm -hmm. um, but first of all, let's hear what he has to say about the Limerick itself. The Limerick is the most popular poem in the world's most widely spoken language, English. Limerick is the only place in Ireland, or indeed the world, to give its name to a form of poetry, or any other literary form. Limerick is the name of both a city and county in the Republic of Ireland, and of a form of poetry. The Limerick is a type of poem which has the following principal features. Firstly, it has five lines. Secondly, the rhyme scheme is A, A, <coughs> B, B, A. Thirdly, lines one, two and five rhyme with one another. Fourthly, lines three and four rhyme with each other. Fifthly, Lines 1, 2 and 5 usually have 9 syllables, and sixthly, lines 3 and 4 usually have 6 syllables. There are a number of theories to explaining why the Limerick poem is called a Limerick. Perhaps the most popular theory in Limerick itself is the explanation that the poetic form was invented by the Meg poets Sean O'Toole and Andres McGrath, who uses it in their poetry. The Meg poets were a group of poets who lived on the banks of the Meg near Croom in County Limerick. The second theory is that the Limerick gets its name from the chorus, Will You Come to Limerick, which was used at the end of nonsense lines in the late 19th century. The third theory is that there was a great difficulty of rhyming the word Limerick with any other word, and this resulted in competitions to find the rhyme for Limerick. And finally, there was a theory that the Irish Brigade, um, which fought in the French army in the 18th century, brought the Limerick to Ireland. Several famous authors have written limericks. They include Lim Edward Lear, who is considered to be the father of the limerick, even though he never used the term limerick for this particular form of poetry. Mark Twain, Sir William Schwenk Gilbert of Gilbert and Sullivan fame, George Bernard Shaw, H.G. Wells, James Joyce, Roger Kipling, and Spike Milligan. Shall we get on with the show? So. I would love to say hello and welcome this year's solo under 14 performers. We have Ruben, Lawrence, Anna, Oshin, Ichan, Leon, Eve, Michael, Jimmy, Yajun, Molly, Mark, Kexon, John and Zoe. So we welcome you all.
piano was made out of wood, and over in the corner it stood. When you press on its keys, it'll play what you please, so play it now, if you could. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Galway. He made the keys thrill when in Mayo, so gifted that all would agree so. He mastered the flute and went on to the lute, and in hip-hop he danced and sang hey-ho. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all and the best of luck to all the young pianists in the finals this year. Good luck. Hello, I'm Lawrence Coonan and I'm going to play June Baccarol by Tchaikovsky for the Under 14 Solo Piano Competition.
Two boys were born the same year, both with a musical ear. Handel and Bach breezed through Barack, though they never did meet, I fear. Bob played on the concert grand, but he only had use of one hand. He lost the other in a fight with his brother over who was in the best band. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone!
My grandpa's been playing for years. The baby grand brings him to tears. His face will contort and notes he'll distort as all of us cover our ears. There was a piano named Mo who could only move round real slow with his frame made of iron and his strings in recline. His hammer still played do re mi so. Penis called Fred practiced on keyboards in bed. He loved playing Adagio, but his tuck stank from Agio. He performed in his PJs and said, Happy St. Patrick's Day. My name is Aaron Catalan, and this is my limerick. Its name is Ruprecht. There once was a young man who played piano for a parade. It was all rather swell, but no one could tell. He mimed, it was all a charade. 
Hello, my name is Anna Doherty. I'll be playing Variations Number no. 5 by Benjamin Britten for the Under 14 solo. Did you practice, she asked every day. I said yes and attempted to play. But she knew, like by magic, my piano was tragic and her nerves, they were starting to fray. That's the entry from Dublin 14, Ireland. Lo e le porric jiv galere. And wishing all the contestants in this year's piano festival the very best of luck. Can't wait to hear you all. Bye. Why is my keyboard so squeaky? Said the boy to his mum quite meekly. It's been so for a while, though spattered with oil, when you fry up the sausages weekly.
Playing the piano while drinking. It's wise to confine all your plinking to the pale scale of C, where no sharps or flats be, thus hedging your chances of stinking. Very happy St. Patrick's Day to you from Rath Mines. There once was a piano called Steinway, which was lovingly played in its heyday. It gave pleasure to winners as well as beginners, but now it's for auction on eBay. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Killaloo, County Clare, and the best of luck to all the young piano players in the festival. In London, it's called a Joanna, because that's how they pronounce piano. It's got 88 keys, partly made of trees, and plays anything from jazz to Rihanna. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Donegal, and best of luck to all the young piano players in the festival. A man with a musical bent found he couldn't quite find all the rent. He thought, hey, hello. I'll hock le piano to find it was already a Lent. Golden pedals and shiny white keys. This piano taught her to do trapeze. When it's right from the rope, we nearly had stroke, but, but it all seemed to look like a breeze. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Galway. 
Hello, my name is Emma. I am the Office Administrator at the Piano Academy of Ireland in Rathgar. This little limerick I've composed is about Sigrid, one of the tutors at the school. There once was a girl from Norway. She was gifted at the piano forte. She arrived in Rathgar and after just a few bars, Rona said, can you start right away? I'm Jimmy Mee and I'll be playing Grand Boss Brillante by Chopin. Thank you. 
there's a fab piano school in Rathgar. You can get there by foot or by car. During pandemic gloom, there's the option of Zoom, so your classes are never too far. It's great to be in Ireland, with music oh so grand. A piano festival will all play on this really special day to honour the saint of our land. Best of luck to everyone in the piano festival. Hi, my name is Eve and I'm going to play Rondo from Sonatina and F by Clementi. There was once a guy in the Keys who played whatever he pleased. His jazz was so hot that it burned on the spot and his blues are so cool that they would freeze. Happy St. Patrick's Day everyone from Limerick's sister city, Spokane, Washington in the United States. I'm Brandon Rankin and I wanted to wish all of the young piano players good luck in their future endeavors and I wanted to share with you a Limerick. So greetings from the Inland Northwest where the cold will make it a test. Jump up on the Keys while you can play them with ease before you freeze and call out in duress. It wouldn't be St. Patrick's Day here in the States without a little bit of green, so I wanted to show everyone that. And again, wish everyone good luck. Have fun. Hello, my name is Oshin. I am playing for the under 14 category. I will be playing Vosatude by William Gillock.
While tuning my upright pianoforte, the tuner was so lost in his thoughts he reversed all the strings. Now the top octave sings as low as a bass at a party. Wishing you all a very happy St. Patrick's Day from County Kildare and best wishes especially to everybody taking part in the 11th National Piano Festival. Bye. One day she was looking for me, singing the tune of Dory Me. So I come to show playing the piano. She continued, Pasulati. Happy St. Patrick Day from the whole Philippines. Hi, my name is Ya Jun Wu and I am 13 years old. The piano piece I am going to be performing for this competition is Sonata Hop 1637, First Movement by Haydn. One day, she was looking for me, singing the tune of Do Re Mi. So I come to show, playing the piano. She continued, Paso La Ti. Happy St. Patrick Day from Bohol, Philippines! Two boys were born the same year, both with a musical ear. Handel and Bach breezed through Baroque, though they never did meet, I fear. Hello, my name is Junio and I'm going to play Mozart Fantasy in D minor.
great to be in Ireland, with music oh so grand. A piano festival we'll all play on this really special day to honour the saint of our land. Best of luck to everyone in the piano festival. A piano was made out of wood, and over in the corner it stood. When you press on its keys, it'll play what you please, so play it now, if you could. Happy St. Patrick's Day from Galway. Hi, my name is Zoe Yu. I will be playing Sonata No. 8, Pathetic, Third Movement by Beethoven.
A man with a musical bent found he couldn't quite find all the rent. He thought, hey, hello, I'll hock le piano to find it was already a Lent. <gasps> Never you've seen the like before, an elephant playing piano, I'm sure. With an abundance of shock, I turn and I clock. It's actually Big Jess from next door. Hello, my name is Hexing Jock. And today, I'll be playing waltz in E minor for the under 14s piano competition. Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Mack, and I was the adjudicator in the solo under-14 class at the Piano Academy of Ireland's 2021 festival. I'd like to talk a little bit about harmonic dynamics. This is something that I listen for. It's when you have a dominant followed by a tonic, or a dissonance followed by a consonance, or an away chord followed by a home chord. In each case, here's the dominant followed by the tonic, 
it sounds more beautiful if you do the dissonant dominant loud and then the tonic soft. If I do it the other way around, it sounds very unmusical. That's one of the things I listened for when I judged the solo under 14. So <clears throat> go and look at your music now and see if you can find dominant chords, which are five chords, that are resolving to one chords. Five, four, three, two, one. And see if you do them louder and the one chord softer. I liked this class very much. I would like to commend Leon Gautier Loftus for his Heller Tarantella, Mark Egan for his Handel Fantasia in C, and Eve O'Donovan for her Clementi Sonatina. I'd like to highly commend Anna Doherty for her Benjamin Britten Variations, Reuben Avery for his Kulau Sonatina, and Jimmy Heng Fan Mi for his Grand Vols Brillant of Chopin. Very highly commend are Michael Holton, who played Madeleine Dring's wonderful Pink Minor, Lawrence Coonan, who played Tchaikovsky, June from the Seasons, and John Ding, who did the Field B-flat Nocturne. In third place, getting a bronze medal, are Yajan Wu for his Haydn, and Molly Devaney for her Nocturne, Opus 32, number one, and Kexin Zhang for her Waltz in E minor by Chopin. Second is Yi Chen Yao, who gets a silver medal for the Mozart D minor fantasy that he played so beautifully. And second silver medal also goes to Zoe Yu for her last movement of the Pathétique by Beethoven. The winner and gold medalist is Pelin Ashin Piu, who got the gold medal for his fabulous performance of the Valse Etude by Gillock, an American composer from Texas. Congratulations to everyone and to their fine teachers. This was a great group. Thank you. My name is Aaron Cahalan and this is my limerick. Its name is Ruprecht. There once was a young man who played piano for a parade. It was all rather swell, but no one could tell. He mimed, it was all a charade. There was once a rich man called Liano who bought a big grand piano, but when he got to his house, the cost was announced and now his car's a wheelbarrow. So, hello, Dr. Matthew Potter. It's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you. Um, we've been chatting here and there on the phone, but this is the first chance we get to see each other face to face, and it's an absolute pleasure. Um, Dr. Thank you so much. Matthew from uh, the curator of the Limerick Museum. Um, That's right. Tell me, you've been having a you've been having a blast listening to all these limericks. I, think. I have. I think the standard of the entries was extremely high, and it was actually quite a difficult task to uh, choose the winners uh, because the, there were so many that were so good. Uh, but I think there was a it, it was a very pleasurable experience to read them and also, of course, to hear them being delivered. Absolutely, indeed it was. We've had just the most fun that we've had, I think, these last few months. Yes, <laughs> and definitely. receiving the limericks in the text form was one thing. We were able to kind of imagine, you know, visualize the, the limerick, but then receiving the videos then afterwards was also a really, really fun yes. thing to bring them to life, so to speak. Very much so, very uh, much so. So you, you've given us so much information about the history of the limerick. That's just been really, really great. And it answered so many questions that I had, and I'm sure many of our listeners have had as well. So thank you so much for that. You're most welcome. So, so tell me, what would be the usual setting of a typical limerick competition? A limerick competition would generally be held in a hotel or in a uh, public house or in, in, a, in a restaurant or someplace like that. And there would tend to be uh, a stipulation that not only would the person uh, compose the limerick, but they would also deliver it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so the actual recitation of the poem is a very significant part of the um, of the process. So it, it's it, because limericks, of course, are meant to be performed as well as written uh, or just read. So um, th that would be the normal procedure when, 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 when for a limerick competition. Absolutely. And how do you go about judging a limerick? Um, there will be a number of factors that I would examine. First of all, that they would adhere to the um, rules uh, governing the, the, the composition of limericks. Secondly, the uh, delivery, um, how well they actually perform the limerick. And thirdly, I suppose then it, the actual um, punch of the limerick, if it's, if it's actually funny or witty, um, those would be the three main factors. Yes, indeed. And there's been very lots of very humorous limericks um, very much so. this, this time was this the first time you had a theme like the piano theme um with the limerick contest or um they uh, no there would often be a, a theme um but this was probably a more specific theme than some of the others the, the some of the earlier teams that i worked on when i was judging limerick competitions were, were somewhat vaguer uh so this one was a much tighter um, a team and therefore of course it was more challenging for the authors to actually produce a leg on this particular team and I think it's a tribute to them that they uh, did so so successfully. So now we have to come back and come down to the um, what we've all been waiting for which is for you to announce right. the results of this year's contest and we'd be most honoured if you could um, let us know what your top selections were. Very good. Thank you so much. The first category uh, we have is very highly commended. And um, by the way, I, I'm announcing them in reverse order. Uh, so I'll finish with the person who emerged as, as the winner. So the very highly commended, uh, Bob Turvey of Bristol in the United Kingdom. Said his lordship, you heard what at school? The pianos can poop. You're a fool, said his wife, well known dad. Please explain to the lad why we've got a large piano stool. <laughs> now from Bristol, allow me to say, let's have a great St. Patrick's Day. The piano's fine voice makes the youngsters rejoice. So the best of luck when you each play. Bonnie Neubauer of Havertown, Pennsylvania, USA. I have two left feet for hands. From playing the piano, I've been banned. When the pianist fell ill, it was her role I got to fill. Quite the lesson in supply and demand. <laughs> I applaud something you can actually do with two left feet for hands. All the piano players in the festival wishes for a great time, all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye-bye. Ooh, waving. Another thing you can do with one left foot for hand. Take care. Now then we come to the third ranking limericks, and we had a joint third, actually. Again, shows how, how close the, the contest was. One of the two um, third ranking limericks was from Emily McCarthy of Dublin in Ireland. A young girl had a touch light as pebbles. Her piano won trophies and medals. But as for legato, she could only staccato, for her legs were too short for the pedals. Yeah! And the other was from Mac Chen, Kirkland, Washington. United States of America. There once was a long hidden score that recently turned into war, which Mozart did write for keys black and white. So could there be possibly more? Yeah! Now I come to the second ranking limericks. And again, we had um, a tie for joint second. Again, showing the, 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 how high the standard was. Um, so the first um, of the two uh, Join seconds. Uh, Kira Cassoni of Kells in County Meath in Ireland. My piano sat gathering dust, but my mother said, Practice you must. 
So I started off slow, only two years ago. Now my skills are what earned me my crust. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day everybody and the very best of luck to all of the young players in the festival. And Dick Warwick of Oaksdale, Washington, United States. We relish the fiddle and bow and the Irish harp dulcet and low. The tin whistle is sweet with the boron's deep beat but I most love the pie o <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Best of luck to all musicians and limerick writers from Oaksdale, Washington State, North America. So now I come to the winner. The winner of the competition is Dave O'Sullivan from County Kildare in Ireland. While tuning my upright pianoforte, the tuner was so lost in his thoughts he reversed all the strings. Now the top octave sings as low as a bass at a party. <laughs> Wishing you all a very happy St. Patrick's Day from County Kildare and best wishes especially to everybody taking part in the 11th National Piano Festival. Bye. <laughs> Very well done, Dave. Well, that's just absolutely brilliant. And thank you so much for your generosity in spreading these awards so far. And it is just great to see that we had some very good children writers in this year's uh, Limerick contest. Um, yes. Throughout, I think we had more than 70 entries. Um, there was there was clearly some seasoned writers in there. I think you could probably tell. Yes, yes, definitely. And, and uh, of the children involved this year was, I think, just really, really great and very encouraging for the future. Yes. So very well. much so. Very much so. And I'd just like to thank you as well uh, for um, asking me to judge this competition. I'm very honoured to be asked. Thank you so much, Dr. Potter and Shell. <laughs> We shall see each other again. My favourite limerick is one that was written by the British Prime Minister Clement Attlee. He was leader of the Labour Party from 1935 to 1955 and Prime Minister from 1945 to 51. Attlee wrote the following limerick on his career. Few thought he was even a starter. There were many who thought themselves smarter. But he finished PM. A C H and O M, an Earl and a Knight of the Garter.